We're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. Hell yes, hell yes, hell yes. We're going to take your AR-15. Hell yes, your AK-47. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15. Oh, hell no. Hell yes. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Prepared Mind channel. It is Friday. It's the free-for-all. It's a frenzy of SHTF going on. So, uh, Friday, you guys have questions. I have questions. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Let's do today. Let's get crazy. How about if you guys start it off? We've got a lot to talk about. I have an idea what the number one topic will be for today. But uh, Mr. Ooman behind the scenes what do we got what do we got what do we got where are we going to start <laughs> and pow Ooh, man says breaking news a terror or attack on russia 60 plus deceased 150 trapped huge theater set on fire the uh interesting uh the numbers keep changing quickly rapidly i've got 40 dead 100 uh injured yeah but it, it, the numbers are going to keep growing folks uh and then yeah this this theater it's in moscow but it's also uh got english signs on the inside the outside i went and checked it out and there really is a theater there with the english signs on it in moscow i didn't know americans took so many breaks there Sounds to me like uh, like four Americans went over there. Maybe they were uh, FBI stooges, and they were activated in Russia, and they went crazy. Anyways, I know that that right there is conspiracy theory speculation, <laughs> but the FBI is known to contact many uh, sick in the head, mentally ill, mass murdering types who just happen to not be arrested ever locked up or cured or anything. They just seem to go nuts. Anyways, be that as it may, thank you for starting off on this topic, Mr. Uman. Uh, it's interesting. I, I watched it a few times. The gunfire, the rapidity of the guy with a uh, <clears throat> semi-automatic. It was, uh, listen to it. It was I'm going to use the word perfectly timed. Every time it fired, it was the exact amount of time from time to time to time to time. It wasn't like pop, 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 pop. It was just pop, 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 pop. That's not how you fire on any target unless you've got everything lined up right next to each other. And it's not that way. It's just fucking weird. Like the people there weren't running. They were just kind of, you know, uh, trying to get out of the way, trying to be small. I don't know. This this whole di idea of uh, the human nature, animal nature is fight or flight. But the, the people in this instance seem to have deer in the headlight syndrome. And they just stood there, laid there. Kind of odd. Odd indeed. Makes, uh, makes me wonder who the people really were. I hope you guys have some ideas, some thoughts. Get them in the comments to Mr. Uman. I would like to discuss this in further detail. Now, Russia, Putin was just reelected with supposedly 80 plus percent approval, right? The voters love him. That doesn't mean there aren't dissenters. It doesn't mean there aren't strong supporters of Ukraine in Russia who are Russian. Uh, <clears throat> But it just seems odd. It also seemed like a hell of a way to end up in a Russian prison. And if and if Russians and Putin are the evil bastards we're supposed to believe, you would think that if you did something like this in Russia, you would be in the gulag being waterboarded. Well, that's your Sunday break. The other six days of the week, you're going to get the usual thumb screws, nutcrackers on the nuts. Uh, let's see, the rack the Iron Maiden, and not the musical type. And uh, let's see, I mean, name your torture. 
drawn without being quartered, unnecessary elective surgery that you sign under duress. I mean, there's just a number of things the Russians will do because here's my suspicion. Um, their culture is different than ours. Being a terrorist inside Russia, killing other Russians because you're not happy with what political leadership did, that's a great way to get you, your family, everyone in your family, maybe even your entire childhood neighborhood, rounded up, arrested, and killed. <clears throat> I wonder if these aren't Ukraine operatives. Because what I heard the very last, and ooh, man, please, and others help me out, is the four gunmen. And it looked like there was one with a semi-auto, one with a full auto AK. Makes a distinctive sound when fired. Uh, those were the only two shooting, it appeared, in the video. But it's a pretty short video. <clears throat> they escaped at large, got away. Why would they do this? Is this a Russian false flag? Oh, I could sit here and just fucking go off on this forever. <clears throat> it's, you know, Putin, the mass murderer. Is this a Russian false flag designed uh, by the uh, GRU to uh, scare the Russian people into thinking that the gunmen were Ukrainian terrorists who are loose in Russia and therefore they need even stricter uh, laws there? And even more justification. Well, and you know the, the 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 silliness just never ends. I think I think Uman actually shared with me today that Ukraine has taken out thirteen of their thirty-seven fuel depots. He's shaking his head. Yes, that was the report. I can't believe that Ukraine has the ability to take out that many oil refineries with drone strikes. That's a lot of shutdowns, but let's just assume, yeah, they hit a pump here, they hit a line there, so they shut things down. <clears throat> when something bad like that is done to your country, it's hard to believe that Putin, Putin, Vladimir Putin, would not retaliate to a factor of 10 against Ukraine. I know he's been attacking lately. He took out a bunch of mercenaries down in the port city of Odessa where they were gathering mercs and uh, armament, hardware, vehicles, ammunition, etc. War is hell, folks. There's a lot of side effects that come from it, and I don't mean like uh, PTSD. I'm talking about oddities, things that continue to happen. And the West, that is to say... Europe, the United States, the European Union, if you will, they want war like you can't believe. They are just dying to have everyone in the world dying because we have issues, folks, serious fucked up issues with the finance monetary banking system. But that's kind of another story separate from the uh, Russian shooting, which happened late in the day on our Friday, looked more like it was Russian evening. Russian evening. Anyways, Mr. Uman, do we have other questions on the topic? <laughs> and, then, then, and then there's this. Ah, you riddle me. He says, given the global condition, yeah, it's not just a, a regional or a national, it's around the freaking planet, why should anything in this world make sense anymore? And when you ask that question, that's an indictment, Mr. Uman, not of American politics, not of European social standards. That's an indictment of everything on the fucking planet, period. I mean, whether you're talking about monetary policy or military policy, I mean, the American military policy is if you join the military, we'll cut off your testicles, your dick, and sew it to your ear. And, and people like that, and they come and line up. It makes no sense at all. Anyways, here we are. Here we are. 
Thank you, Mr. Um, no, nothing, nothing's going to make any sense. What will make sense, though, while the rest of the world struggles with normality in your own world, you have a right to demand your world make sense. So your world, 10 mile radius around you, we can't get order across the entire planet, but we can get order in our world. And folks, the crazy could come to your world very, very quickly. I told everyone I was moving down to Florida, <laughs> going to dig up the prepared bunker, going to happen next week. And lo and behold, here come the Haitians. You got it, folks. The Haitians are on their way. Talk about um, potential for violence in America. Uh, the last, or rather, the boat that they intercepted had Haitian men, night vision goggles, drugs, as in put it up your nose, snort it, you're dead, What? And, and then, of course, guns. Lots of guns. Well, in uh, St. Lucie County, that would be in Florida. I have no idea where that's at. I'm guessing it's on the southern end. The sheriff decided to do a PSA, a public service announcement. And he warned that there's uh, illegal immigrant arrivals on Florida beaches. I think that Americans need to do the job that the federal government refuses to do. Start with demanding your sheriff refuse to allow them to come to shore. For them to come to shore, folks, to me, it's an act of war, an invasion. I don't, I'm tired of hearing about these fucking refugees. They're coming to America. No, they're, they're not refugees. They're coming here. We don't know who is armed, who isn't, who is criminal, who isn't. It's not, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, folks. And I think it's an act of war against America by Biden. Allowing illegals into the country is illegal. <laughs> I don't know. Why is this so difficult to get? I don't get it. Oh, man, help me out. Throw me a bone here. Why is illegal so difficult to understand? Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Crickets, just like that. <clears throat> Maybe... Maybe there's something in that $1.2 trillion spending bill that'll fix this. Right. Yeah, fat chance. We'll get to that in a little bit. Mr. Uman, who wants to step up next? <laughs> it would be you, Mr. Music. Chin Music says, the same people that hit Nordstrom probably hit the refineries. Wonder who that could be. Hmm. Could it be the same people? that hit the Nord Stream pipelines at the bottom of the frickin' sea. You know, a, a typical terrorist doesn't go to the most fucking difficult place to blow up a pipeline. They go to the easiest place because of, I don't know, skill level, difficulty level, funding, etc. would be much easier to blow the fucking pipeline up out of the water. But to say, well, you know, the terrorists didn't want to make it easy for them to repair the Nord Stream pipelines. So that's why they choose to uh, blow them up. Yeah, I think it's all the same people, Mr. Music. It's the same people, in my opinion. Whether they're at a concert hall, shopping place, or the bottom of a sea, or an oil refinery, or a bridge going to Crimea... And I can't help every fucking time I hear something that goes wrong inside Russia. I keep hearing light in the loafers, Lindsey Graham, U.S. Senator from South Carolina, want to be Republican. He actually wants to be a Democrat. He said that uh, the money they spent, the money the U.S. government sent and spent on Ukraine that was used to kill Russians was the best money they had ever spent. Yeah, I want, I have a lot of questions, Mr. Music. I wonder a lot about these people. <sighs> 
Mossad, CIA, Interpol, MI6. Name your secret organization. Now, uh, maybe people doubt me when I start talking about these organizations. Go back to Vietnam and you'll learn about a group called Mac V SOG. They were a, a special operators uh, organization. They had Navy SEALs, Marine Force Recon. I think they had a couple of guys from the Air Force. They had CIA, Army Green Berets. They were a multi-military branch organization. But their job was to go behind enemy lines, in front of enemy lines, through the fucking jungles of Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and terrorize the living shit out of everyone, as well as train insurgents and counterinsurgents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you think they don't do that anymore, you might want to check your IQ at an IQ testing machine. Uh, of course, they do shit like that. If they're not training locals, they're actually engaging in activities. To pretend like the CIA are good guys. Uh, no, they're just doing as they're told. And, and they, I don't think they give a shit. I mean, maybe they feel like heroes. I have very little respect because they're not going after communists. Communists killed over 100 million people. That's why I would support a group like Mac V. Sog in taking on the communists behind the scenes. But Russia is not communist. In fact, I don't think Russia is socialist. What I do know is Europe is socialist. It's one fucking breath away from being communist. And remember, all a communist is, is a socialist in a very big hurry. The World Economic Forum is full of, uh, shall we say, social fascist slash communists. You might want to say they're eco-fascist social communists. And I think that I've refined my belief system based on uh, uh, geopolitical, geoeconomic, geo whatever have you, <laughs> worldwide shit going on. The World Economic Forum, the aristocrats, the super corporations, they cooperate with government and get government contracts and they keep their wealth. That is why they seem to me to be uh, eco, as in economic fascists. But when it comes to the social application of government authority, that is to say, how does the government view the regular person, people? They view them as peasants and objects, chattel of the state. In other words, they treat us to their communism while they treat themselves to economic fascism. And that's why I feel very free to call them fascist, communist, socialist, scumbags in every uh, every sense of the word. Thank you, Mr. Chin Music, and uh, it was good to get that off my chest. I don't want people being confused going, John, fascism is extreme right wing and communism is extreme left wing. No, they're all left wing and they're all socialist. It's just how do they divvy up the money and the authority and the divvying of money and the divvying of authority has nothing to do with the me and the you on the street level where we just get kicked in the knee, uh, kicked in the teeth, or kicked in the nuts. Take your pick. Mr. Ooman, where do we want to roll next? Let's just have some fun with you guys. Name Redacted says, you can't remake America or the world without tearing it down first. Right, Obama? Interesting remake. He wanted to fundamentally change. Did the word remake ever come out of Obama's lips? I mean, they may have. I just remember his hope and change campaign of 2008 and his fundamentally changing America. It has fundamentally changed, folks. And I want to tell you, you know what that one of the most powerful fundamental changes has been? It is to wake Americans up. That is continuing to happen. And I'm going to point to earlier in this week, because this is the Friday free for all. Thank you, man. It's the Friday free for all. And we're going to take a look at the whole week behind and the week and weeks coming ahead. 
is uh, <clears throat> last week we had an incident at a Planet Fitness. What was that incident? A man was in the woman's bathroom shaving his face or shaving something. And she took some pictures of him and she got thrown out. She was told to leave and they, re, you know, they just pulled her membership and said, no more, you can't come back. The rest of America, without any prompting from Trump or Candace Owens or Ben Shapiro or Tim Pool or Uman Uman, they didn't, you know, it wasn't some big shot, super smart, you know, powerful dude. America just said, you know what? Fuck you, Planet Fitness. And they started canceling their memberships and selling their stock. That is to say, Wall Street. They have taken a giant shit over wokeness. Now, wasn't it just last year and the year before and the year before that and the year before that that we continuously hear about these fruitcakes trying to destroy America and uh, pervert our social system and allow children to be molested in schools? Molested folks both physically and emotionally and spiritually and intellectually. But now Americans are waking up. And I think that is fundamental change that Obama does not like. And there's more of that coming. Americans are going to wake the hell up, whether they like it or not. And I think that's an interesting uh, way to look at it. Whether they like it or not, it's go time. It's time to wake up. Okay, let's see. I, I did want to talk about that $1.2 trillion bill that the House of Representatives, controlled by the Republicans, they passed it. They did get more votes from Democrats than Republicans, but they passed it nonetheless. And uh, why would uh, MAGA Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, why would it even come to the floor for a vote? Did someone do some sort of fancy schmancy paperwork and uh, force it? You know, it, it's incredible. This is a spending exa uh, extravaganza. Uh, what I don't know is how much of that money is going to Zelensky and Ukraine. How much of that money is going to the big guy, Biden? Where? Oh, by the way. Biden is somehow getting his way. His political will is being obeyed. I want to ask you a question. I want to remind you, where's the impeachment these days? Remember that thing called impeachment when a, when a president commits high crimes or misdemeanors, felonies or misdemeanors, commits an act of treason, fails to do his job, disgusts and disappoints the Americans. You can, you can, where is that? Fuck it, folks. DC, it is lost. Now, we need to keep the fight there, though. Keep the fight going in DC to keep DC out of our states. In fact, the Republicans lost one more representative. You bet, folks. Another slime ball, rhino, Republican name only, screwball, has screwed us over. That's right. This guy's name is Mike Gallagher. He's supposed to be a Republican. He has decided he's going to retire. He's going to step down on 419. Uh, <clears throat> Ooh, man. Chin music. Everyone. 419, April 19th. What day is that? That one seems to stick in my head. Something about Hitler and 419. Why the fuck would he choose 419? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It's the day before 420, and of course we all know what 420 is. <laughs> Anyways, this, this cocksucker, Mike Gallagher. And I dare you, Mike, come and find me. Get a hold of me. Get a hold of me through Uman or Jolene, and I'll meet you, and we can duke it out in the street, in a boxing ring, whatever you want. I challenge you to a friendly, sporting, good time. You're a fucking jackass, Mr. Gallagher. And that leaves the Republicans in Congress with a one-vote 
majority. If we lose one or two more guys, we're going to end up with Hakeem Jeffries as the Speaker of the House. Or maybe Nancy Pants will come back for her third, fourth, or fifth whirlwind tour of Bitch in Charge. Or maybe we'll get some new blood in there, like Hank Johnson. He'll he'll let us know how islands flip over from having too many tanks. You just you just never know how much fun we're gonna have. <sighs> Anyways, never Trumpers, never fear, folks. They're everywhere. Just because you think someone's a Republican doesn't necessarily mean they are doesn't necessarily mean they are. They could be sandbagging, lying to you, lying to family members. In fact, yeah, uh, I'm going to refrain from uh, sharing a personal family foible where someone was supposed to be a Republican ended up marrying a fucking communist. They know who they are. Yes, they do. Ooh, man, anything on 419? Oh, oh he, he gave me the finger. I think it was the appropriate finger, which was, give me a minute, John. Not your number one. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> on 419, 1933, FDR left the gold standard. Oh, shit. This, there you go. There's a date we all need to remember. We've got, uh, we've got 408, you know, when the, the asteroid's going to impact the moon, push it into the sun. The sun's going to go out like it does at night. And AOC is going to come out of the great pumpkin patch. And if she sees her shadow, it's six more eclipses. So uh, just, just, uh, just in case anyone missed that conspiracy theory, I wanted to get it out there. Thank you, Mr. Ooman. Why the fuck would you choose? If you're going to get out of Congress, if you're going to leave, just fucking leave. Right? Like quitting and giving your boss two weeks' notice. Essentially, you're quitting, giving your boss two weeks' notice so you can drink beer on the job. Hitler was born on 420, 1889. I knew there was some Hitler shit around here. I didn't know he had 420, though. I thought that was taken by the stoners. Anyways. It is Friday. It is <laughs> the Friday frenzy, the free-for-all, whatever you want to call it. What an amazing fucking week. I am I am exhausted just from everything that's happening. So I'm going to get some rest, get caught up this weekend, and I'll be back Sunday Night Live, folks. I think Sunday is going to be one hell of a show. I think some weird shit's going to kick off. Some weird, weird shit. BLM is back, and they are active again. They don't like Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, someone made a comment that I picked up on one of the the, uh, the videos I did. It said Kyle Rittenhouse got paid off by the government with all those millions in his lawsuit. So he has to be a good boy now. And I thought, you know, um, I don't think the government gave him money. The government... Uh, did, did no such thing. It was a jury of his peers that agreed that he had been uh, slandered and bad-mouthed and fucked over by the mainstream media and, and other publications, and they are the ones who had to pay, not the government. And it was a jury and not the judge. Anyways, and it, the case was uh, the case was tried in a neutral venue, unlike January 6th protesters who have been fucked over over, folks, fucked over by the government. Both juries, district attorney, judges, police, the entire D.C. You know, fuck D.C. Let me make that clear. In case anyone missed it, fuck Washington, D.C. And every politician there and every bureaucrat there and every last one of them. Get this, folks. Uh, a Make America Great Again person. Her name is Isabella DeLucha. Guess what? She was arrested very recently, as in the last 36 hours. Arrested. You know what her crime was? Her crime was she was in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. That's right. 
Uh, she is some sort of influencer. She is a Republican influencer, a Make America Great Again influencer. Uh, apparently, she's supposed to be attractive. I don't see why that even fucking matters. That's mainstream media going, well, she, she's beautiful. Who gives a shit? She's an American. She got arrested. A and as far as I'm concerned, folks, Biden, the Department of Justice, the Attorney General's Office, Merrick Butlick Garland, the entire justice system in Washington, D.C., can, can choke on a bag of dicks. The system has become absolutely despotic. It, is, it has become an unlawful system. It's not even unconstitutional. It's past that. Even their own unconstitutional rules for Washington, D.C. are just being, they're being bent so far that the evil meter, pow, pegged and broke. Anyone who is a political opposition speaker that Washington can get a hold of, they'll fuck over. They're sending January Sixers into general populations and then sicking scumbag criminals on them, probably offering them a couple packs of smokes to try and shank January Sixers. But yeah, they've arrested somebody. Again, Almost four fucking years later. Oh, well, we heard you were in Washington, D.C. Hey, FBI, listen up, you cocksuckers, and I mean that literally. I was nowhere near January 6th, Washington, D.C. So stay the fuck away because I don't feel like letting you arrest me today or ever. Why, why should anyone trust these fuckers? I mean, after seeing what they've done to Americans in, in January 6th protester land, who were invited in to public property by the police only to be arrested and charged with bullshit crimes, tortured, abused, beaten, exposed to God knows what. You know, fuck these people. I tell you what, fuck them. <sighs> Just like Planet Fitness, fuck you. $400 million in value because of a transgender bathroom bullshit episode i wish we could cancel washington dc and take our money out of that fucking system wouldn't that be nice well yeah you guys want to be dickheads i'll quit paying my taxes i think that's a fine fucking idea all right oh man where we want to roll next who wants to step on up we're halfway through the friday free for all aha Heidi, Heidi, Heidi comes up with, she says, what is this all about? Recalling retired army people. Well, those soldiers from the army, that's right. The Biden administration, they're warming up the what? They want to warm up the draft idea. The concept of, well, we want to have a war and we're going to need people. Too sweet. Chop, chop. Right now. Pronto. Capisha, huh? That's what they want to do. So they can't get young people to join the military and fight because, well, they're too busy sticking their hands in their pants, putting fingers in their ass and wondering what kind of person they're. I mean, how stupid are these youths when they don't even know their own fucking gender? Anyways, that's the only reason they'll sign up for the army. The army the U.S. Army did not, cannot, will not meet its recruiting goal. At the same time, they want to introduce the concept of a wider war to the American people. They're trying to continuously scare us with terrorists. You're going to send American men, soldiers, to go fight and die against Russia unless we give Ukraine more money. Well, didn't we just give the federal government or didn't the federal government give itself another 1.2 trillion fucking dollars? I mean, trillions. Unbelievable. So they want to go after and activate the, <clears throat> uh, the reserves. You leave the military uh, from active duty service, you are an inactive reservist. They can call you back up 
you're already trained, you're within four years of being in military condition, you can be uh, retrained, brought up to, to snuff, put back in good physical condition, and put into active service if they want to have a war. Of course, they're threatening us uh, with war with, uh, start with North Korea, China, Iran, uh, the Middle East, Israel, Ukraine. There's a lot of different, shall we call it, um, there's a lot of different places. But let me bring up this topic and make you think about it a little bit more. How about this? They take all of the fruitcake army people, add to it all of the uh, <clears throat> inactive reserves. They call them up. They send them to foreign theaters to go fight the enemy. Meanwhile, back here in the United States of America, they're inviting in more and more and more militant-aged youths from other fucking countries who have shown up here in our country not to work, not to be lawful citizens, but to be ungrateful, illegal fuckheads. And they want to, well, beg, borrow, and steal everything they can. And by steal, I mean stealing people's houses. They're running around now looking for unoccupied houses, houses that are for sale, houses that are abandoned, houses that are uh, vacation homes, guest homes, and they're slipping their way in, sneaking their way in so they can live there and then claim to be squatters. That's right. They've discovered a loophole in American law that were too fucking nice in their countries. Right. You don't touch anyone's property. You can get shot. I think we need to institute that here. We're going to have problems, folks. It has just started. Just started. BLM wants to go after Kyle Rittenhouse and start their shit. The illegals want to start their shit. The United States government wants to send our uh, discharged, retired, old army. They want to send them overseas, possibly. That's what's going on, as far as I'm concerned. It's more scare tactics, more threats, more bullshit, more SHTF. Oh, you bet. More SHTF. <sighs> wow. I mean, just to give you an idea how stupid these Democrats are, folks. In Chicago, the voters said, no, 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 we don't want a fucking tax hike. As if anyone could afford it there. But Mayor BJ, who is a Marxist, a communist, he should be in prison for being a communist. Instead, he's been elected mayor. But because his tax hike didn't pass, guess who he is blaming for the turnout of the Chicago voters? That's right, Trump supporters. Donald Trump and Trump supporters have stopped this communist scumbag from his getting his tax hike. I don't think there's any Trump supporters left in Chicago. I think all four of them have already left. What is this fucking guy talking about? Oh, man, do you know anyone that voted for BJ's tax hike? He's giving me, he's waving me off. It's like, nope, just move along. <laughs> I think we should all vote in Chicago to help them out. Mail-in ballots, you bet, all of us. We need an address that we can all claim as ours. And this is a joke, fucking government. It's a joke, even though the Democrats do it. We can all use the same address, right, and do uh, mail-in ballots. <laughs> I'm sure if they thought I was serious, they'd be at my door. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, who's there? <laughs> John, he no home. Uh, just us illegals. <laughs> now, speaking of places uh, and political nonsense and chicanery and whatever the fuck is going on, even in Florida, folks, there were, it used to be a swing state. Remember the hanging chads? The 2000 election? That fucking guy, he's, he's got his glasses on his face. You know, and he's he's like staring. He's like staring at the fucking card. He's like trying to see if, if there's dimpled chads, pregnant chads, hanging chads, 
It was so fucking close. All right, which way was Florida going to go? All right, man, I, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get to it. Uh, <laughs> it was such a close thing, right? Because Florida was a swing state. Well, now Florida is not a swing state. In fact, even the Democrat strongholds, the shitty ass Democrat areas, they're getting flipped over to Republican, folks. You bet. You bet. They are they are converting people. People are leaving. And good. Get the fuck out of Florida. Get the fuck out of the South, Democrats. Go up to Baltimore, Philly, Pittsburgh, Chicago. Get, get your asses to Ohio. Ohio needs more in Cincinnati and Cleveland and New York City. We need more Democrats up there. You guys can go up there, work your asses off, pay huge taxes, and then give all your money to the fucking illegals. Get the fuck out of Florida. Florida says, fuck you to Democrats. I am that pissed off at these people, folks. Every last, if you vote Democrat, <laughs> I won't send them to, to your shop, Ooh, man. I promise. I promise. I'll send them just up the road to Chicago. And I know a lot of Democrats are leaving blue cities as well. They're like, hey, this place sucks. It's like, it's your policy that you voted for, you fuckers. And folks, that is why shit has hit the fan. It just has, and it's not going to get better. It isn't. That's why I sound like I'm so pissed off, because these fuckers have ruined our country. And it's not going to come back as the same country. In fact, I was I sent a message today to uh, Orlando, and I said, look, you know, I, I want to be around to turn this fucker around. First off, we need to eliminate all unworthy, unwanted, unwashed, un-American types. And then we're going to have to sit down and reform a government. And that government that is going to be formed is going to have a Bill of Rights that is much more fucking specific than the old Bill of Rights. And there will be an accountability clause in every last one of them. You violate someone's rights as a government official, here's your fucking penalty. It's right there in the new Bill of Rights. Right there. Pow. We make it into like a you know level one, level two, level three violation. Level one, you lose your fucking house. Level two, you lose your house, all your property, and you have to work as a as a fucking government worker in the rice paddies or some shit. And number three, you lose everything and, and you just get killed because you're such an anti freedom jackass. It there needs to be something. All right, let's have let's let's do this. We got more to go. Time's running out. Ooh man, who's next? Miss Chin Music, he says he has a new dinner prayer. <laughs> Praise the Lord, pass the sauce, and fuck Joe Biden. That's not a bad dinner prayer. And he says he's got to go back to work. The Haitians need new shoes. See you Sunday. That's right, Chin Music. I'll see you at Sunday night live. I'll see you at the zoo. That'll be 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 3 p.m. Pacific time, bring your drinks, bring your questions, bring your sense of humor, and bring your questions. We will be talking. And just in case anyone's wondering, what do you mean? We get to ask questions? Yeah, the whole show is yours if you choose to have it. And we'll go over every topic that matters. All you have to do on Sunday Night Live is show up, and we'll do that. We'll go it. We'll take it from there. All right, Mr. Uman, we've got some others. Who is next? We have Mikey G says, what about vampires? They going to run amok during the eclipse? Oh, good golly, folks. Vampires and the eclipse? <laughs> really? Vampires and the eclipse? I guess it's possible. Everything else is possible. You wouldn't think that it's possible that a man could lie his way and cheat to the extent they did. 91 million fucking votes, Joe Biden. Put him in the White House and with that kind of number, then convince the world, stop protesting. It was legitimate. And then and then watch as people get arrested for protesting it. And then this cocksucker breaks every law, violates our trust, 
international trust gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar, taking bribes, extorting people, never gets impeached. Four years. Fuck. It'll be four years at the end of this year that Joe Biden hasn't even been impeached, much less charged with a criminal offense and had that have the Senate try him. Impeaches it. It may as well have vampires next. I mean, why, why stop with zombies, Mikey, when we can have vampires as well? And they're continuing to scare people with this eclipse. Folks, several years ago, I stood outside without a uh, one-way mirror to reflect the evil rays. I watched an eclipse, a full 100% fucking eclipse. I put on, I think, three pairs of sunglasses. did not turn me into a vampire or a zombie. It didn't turn me into a Democrat. <laughs> but I guess eclipses uh, after shit hits the fan, I guess they, they're much worse than eclipses before. It was literally a full 100% eclipse where I was standing at in extreme northern California. Look it up. I can't remember exactly what year it was. It was very, uh, how do we put this? It was very um, anticlimactic. It was interesting. All of a sudden, it got a little bit darker. The light wasn't real direct. Things felt funny. I mean, I'll, I'll say that. It just felt kind of fucking weird. And then it was over just a minute later. Anyways, thank you, Mikey G. Mr. Uman, where are we rolling from there? <laughs> Uh, Orlando is allowed to put a comment up. What the hell? He says, this world needs an enema. Uh, and if you don't know what an enema is, folks, that is a clearing of the bowels. Uh, <clears throat> yes, we need to clean all the shit out of our system. That is an enema. We need it politically. We need it militarily. We need it socially. We need it financially. We need it educationally. We need it legally. Every every way you can imagine, we need the shit cleaned out. I agree with you, Orlando. Thank you, sir. And thank you for keeping an eye on me all week and wishing well. I wish the same to you. And hopefully your bosses, you know, that guy you see in the mirror, he doesn't fuck with you too bad. All right. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate that, Orlando. Uh, Mr. Uman, do we got some more or do I get a? Yes, we got some more. He says the messaging order, this is name redacted, the messaging order was change, fundamental transformation, transformative change, and then finally remaking America. Those are all the Obama, shall we say, sales pitches. Because he literally was just, it was all sales pitch, salesmanship, bullshit. From Obama. And I wish I could meet that dumb son of a bitch. I would really like to know if he's as dumb as I think he is or dumber. Or if they dumbed him down so that he could speak to the average dumbocrat. I'd like to just say, you know what, Barack? You're left handed. Don't got any problems with that. You smoke cigarettes. I don't got any problems with that. But, you know, are you a fucking pole smoker or what? <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they took pictures and video of Obama smoking, Obama shooting a shotgun. I mean, he, he's just wow. Absolute wow. Head scratcher the whole way. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Name Redacted, for digging up all things that Obama said he wants to do to America, and I think he's done it. I think he hit that one right out of the fucking park. Oh, by the way, remember the executive director of the Bill and Hillary Clinton airport? That guy who had the ATF show up at his house approximately 6 a.m. before the sun was up, and apparently an executive, that's right, a 
airplane airport business executive decided he was going to shoot at the ATF. And so they shot him in the head. He's dead. That's right, folks. He's dead. And there's a lot of questions about the incident. Dead men tell no tales. We know that. This guy is dead. Where's the investigation? Oh, don't worry. The FBI will handle the investigation. Make sure that the ATF, they play by the rules. They're good people, right? We'll never get to the bottom of that, just like we will never be allowed to get to the bottom of the CIA assassination of uh, John F. Kennedy. That's right. Yeah, Brian Malinowski, super nerd. The guy looks like an incredible, incredible, incredible geek. 53-year-old geek. Right? Uh, the warrant, the ATF involvement with... Uh, an airplane geek. They're saying that the investigation is ongoing. He's dead now. The investigation is over. And uh, <clears throat> apparently the ATF targeted his brother. And that his brother may have brought something he shouldn't have. What? So instead of just calling and contacting Mr. Mr. Molinowski, instead of calling him and saying, hey, you know, we need to come and search your place. We got a warrant. You know, we're just going to, we'll be there at six in the morning. We'll kick the door and you go ahead and shoot at us. We'll shoot you in the fucking head. <clears throat> but Matthew Molinowski, the brother, says it's all speculation at this point. I got a feeling that he bought something he shouldn't have. That's the only thing I can think of. What could he... And then this is his brother, Matthew Malinowski. Apparently it wasn't the brother, it was him. I, they can't get their fucking story straight. Anyways, this is what he said, that his brother, the executive geek of the airport, had no choice but to defend himself. And that the official story, quote, stinks to high hell. Of course it does. Uh, he says uh, the ATF went after him in the worst possible way there's no reason why they couldn't have arrested him at work at the airport sure why not upper middle class white suburban neighborhood he did like his guns apparently he had a collection of coins and guns but you know he decided to do suicide by a homosexual cop with the ATF Makes no sense. And what could he have bought? What could he have bought? Why would he buy something illegal? Folks, did you know that you, me, or anyone else can go get a fully auto machine gun? Assault rifle, if you will. That's right. You and I, we could do that. Not a big deal. All you have to do is get the proper license. It's not, a, it's not hard to do. It's not overly expensive. The most expensive part about getting a full auto license... I think it's a class three FFL license. Most expensive part is feeding your gun ammunition at high prices when it's shooting full auto. That's the trick. <laughs> Ooh, man, sending you a message on signal. That's right. Signal that cannot be hacked by the government that pisses them off. All right. <clears throat> I want to tell you, folks, the most dangerous people in America, they're being arrested. You think I'm talking about the president? Nope, he's not arrested. Nancy Pants, up Chuck Schumer? Nope, they won't be arrested. Uh, BLM, Antifa? Nope, nope, we're not going to arrest them. The pro-Palestinian terrorists? Nope, they're not being arrested. Sorry, sorry. Uh, the abortionists? Yeah, who, who, who burn crosses, burn churches, attack people? Not, nope, not them. You know who they're arresting? A fucking pizza shop owner. Because he tossed pizza at City Hall. Because he's pissed at <clears throat> Mayor Adams of New York City. His bullshit rules. So they arrested him for throwing a pizza. Well, illegals can steal. They can squat. They can even murder and, and kill people as well as 
folks attempt murder against police and they'll walk. But don't you throw that pizza at the government. How dare you? That is the country we live in, folks. Make no exceptions. No, no, no. Make no exceptions. And then get this, folks. Remember General Mike Flynn? He was the uh, national security advisor for Trump. He is predicting a black swan. That means false flag coming before the election. Ron Paul says the same thing to Tucker Carlson. We're going to have a huge false flag. It's coming. We all see it, folks. We all feel it. We're all predicting it. But what form or action will this false flag be? What is the desired effect? Do they want to influence the election? Well, General Flynn seems to think so. Do they want to cancel the election? Do they want to send us to war? Do they want to start social chaos? Or do they want all of those things simultaneously to concurrently be kicked off with social conflict at home, international war? Are you prepared for any of it? It's hard to be prepared 100% for everything, but are you prepared for any of it? Mr. Uman, let's do another question from the audience, from the gang out there. What do you guys have in mind? Well, it's Uman. And he's got some fun facts. He's been digging, folks. Uman is a hardworking dude. In fact, if you knew what Uman did, you would probably be glad that you uh, have a have a normal job. Anyways, he said, yes, some 419 fun facts. The Oklahoma City bombing, I mean, booming. Uh, the first episode of The Simpsons aired on 419. The Revolutionary War started. Battles of Lexington and Concord on 419. Waco, there it is. Flames, 419. That's when the military, who wasn't really there, but they were there, in fact, including Delta Force and a couple others. Uh, what a fucking sham that was under the Clintons. Let me get my shit together again. 419. And on 419, Manson was sentenced to death. Well, there it is. 419, pretty popular date. And this Republican knucklehead, not even a Republican. He's not even a fucking American as far as I'm concerned. And April 19th is a Friday. Friday the 19th. Wow. Just fucking wow. Wow. I've got, I've got too much shit here, folks. Uh, once again, folks, um, transgender people are out there doing damage to others. They're now, they're now uh, trying to dox J.K. Rowling's children. That's right, the lady that wrote Harry Potter. They hate her because she says, well, there's men and there's women. So they're going after her. They're targeting innocent people. That's what terrorists do, folks. They don't go after the problem. They go after the family of the problem. Once again, folks, violence from these hate-motivated trans testicles. Literally, they are hate-motivated. And I've, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this. This, this was unbelievable. I couldn't believe this. Unfucking believable. The illegals. Woman was found murdered in her apartment in New York City. She confronted squatters in her dead mother's home. Suspects are at large, folks. Once again, illegals are here to murder, steal, Destroy, loot, burn America th to the ground. And, and a big thanks. A big thanks to Biden. Meanwhile, a woman was charged the other day. She's been arrested and charged with being responsible for uh, <clears throat> uh, voter fraud. 
She was also involved in not just voter fraud, but the election night absentee ballot flash drive scandal, as well as uh, absentee ballots for military. Surprise, she is a major cheater, folks, in every jurisdiction where the Democrats control had people just like this incredible bitch. She needs to be given the reward she earned. It's not just election interference. It's election theft. It is trying to destroy America. It's not cheating. It's treason. I don't know what to say, folks. This is what they want for America. Are you prepared to fight back? A chance favors the prepared mind. Semper Fi means always faithful and Godspeed. I'll see you guys Sunday night live. Thank mm-hmm. you.